my last set uh, of the day. Yeah. Um, I still think my analysis needs like you know work because I I, I I like look over and I find it hard to like. Sometimes I find it hard to like figure out pinpoint exactly like the main thing I'm doing wrong. Hmm. Um. I find like some things like I think like general pointers, but it feels like I end up being like, oh, it's my deck skill a lot of the time. Yeah. Or like some key decisions where I'm like, okay, yeah, that's something I should probably think about a bit more. But like, I don't really feel like I get an over generalization of like big mistakes. Hmm. But I don't know if that's like just the cases you get better. Uh, it definitely gets easier because obviously there's like less mistakes you're making, so you can sort of see which ones have the biggest impact. Um, mm. Whereas there's probably a lot more things going wrong at your level, so it's you know a bit mm. more harder to untangle. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. So, what were your thoughts from uh, watching it back then? Is this the one you sent um, me? By I felt the way? like I was playing really like like an overall. I felt like I felt like I was playing really really like careful, which I don't normally do mm -hmm. in like a way that was bad. So like yeah. I was like getting into advantage positions and then like holding back. Yeah. So I'd knock, like, switch down. And yeah. then just, like, laser. Yeah. Whenever then, like, I had advantage, I could have pushed the advantage, like, way more than I normally do. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, do you think that was a, uh, like, a tilt thing? Like, because you were scared or whatever, or...? No, I think my mindset was pretty good. I think it was more just like a... I think it was an in-tournament thing, but I don't think I've noticed myself doing as much before. So now that's in my head, I might like, try and focus on it a bit more when I'm playing tournament. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a common theme as to why you end up playing a bit like that. Like, I, I have it a bit sometimes versus Puff and Ices, and it's mm. just about the uh, sort of the mental pressure of, like, if I mess up, yeah. then I'm going to get cheesed. Yeah, I get you. Um, so, yeah, you want to just try and sort of think through it and think what the root cause of it might be. Because, like, for example, I don't really get that versus... Fox or Falcon or anyone like that, mm. but it's it's just the like the cheesier characters. Yeah, it's almost like a blunt way to put it. Ingrained to think that like, oh, it's way worse. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like Falcon's equally as bad generally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just doesn't feel the same though. But mm. but yeah, it's important to like know that, and then sort of when you go into it, um, you know, just remind yourself that like just play the game like it's any other character. Um, mm. Yeah. There were like a few things that I wanted to mention was um uh, actually yeah actually I think most of it is stuff I want to talk about actually okay. rather than like analyze because um that's cool what was it uh I feel like I've been having an issue when I've been practicing recently since the Falco lesson mm. um because the Falco lesson was so like information heavy I feel like when I've been practicing I've been overloaded on information yep um I feel like I'm finding it hard to focus on like. Implementing one thing. When when you say practicing, by the way, are we on about like just playing net play or something? Yeah, like just yeah, playing okay, like things I can only implement like in the matchup, like yeah. dealing with Falco lasers or like stuff like that. Yep. Um, because I feel like I'm thinking about too much now, and it mm -hmm. kind of like it's transitioning to other matchups where I'm like kind of getting overwhelmed about what I'm thinking about. Whereas yeah. when we had just done like Puff and Peach, I was like, oh, this is very simple, like new stuff. Focus on yeah. that. Um. Mm. I don't really know. I can link you in. Well, the good thing to do is, or maybe in my head, I was like, maybe I should just like play against the Falcon and literally only dash back at a laser as my option. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's bad, I should just literally only do that to try and get it like into my gameplay, and I can yeah. stop thinking about it, and I can do another one. Yeah, um, I think that's one way. Um, I think first of all, you do want to just. Um... Did we ever talk about like? Um having plans and goals before you go into a, a friendly session or whatever? Um, I don't think we specifically talk about it, because I feel like we've briefly talked about it, because I kind of already tried to do that, but I am I kind of forget sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Um, one I normally the... see my character, and I'm like, what am I trying to work on this matchup? And then I think about that the whole... I try to think about that the, time, oh, the whole time I'm playing. Yeah, okay. Um... Because there, there are one or two lessons I think I've done where I've gone over it a bit more in depth. But basically, it's just about um, try and have some notes that you look at beforehand and then you can look at them like between games or at yeah, least have yeah, some sort of that. mental reminder. Um, but yeah, it sounds like you're probably um, 
However, generalizing, what do you want to work on? So you might be saying, oh, I want to work on dealing with lasers, but that's just yeah. like such a huge such a thing. Huge topic, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I have been doing, yeah. Yeah, I don't, whereas, really, I don't really know how to solve that. <laughs> yeah, you just want to break it down into like, because we went over quite a few different scenarios, didn't we? Mm. So, um, uh, so an example would be um, using take laser up tilt when I see my opponent is doing lots of approaching lasers. Mm. And that's like quite a specific and easy to spot thing right mm. um compared to like you know <laughs> just dealing with lasers in general which is like half the game mm. <laughs> in this is, so yeah um oh, I, mean, I, I don't think i uploaded that last lesson did i so no i yeah. might have made things a bit harder <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting on it i'm waiting on it yeah i do feel like i need to refresh on that one yeah um so that that might be like causing some problems as well but mm. um yeah, um, I think that would help. So maybe like go into a, for, for like a Falco running session, I go in and like think about like, just pay attention to how they're approaching and just like think about like, if I, if they're do just like generalize it like a little bit less. So like maybe like think like, oh, if they're doing laser approaches, I should think about doing laser up to it. If they're doing aerial approaches, I should just do dash back and not think about any other of the options, just those two. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You want to just make it as narrow as possible. Mm -hmm. And that sort of links to the thing I was saying about you were saying you were going one step forward, two steps back. Mm -hmm. If you focus, if you narrowly focus down onto really small things like that, it's way easier to see, like, progress. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot more rewarding as well, um, just in terms of, like, when you're playing. Instead of it being the reward based solely on, you know, like, whether I'm winning or not, which mm -hmm. is very, uh, you know... It fluctuates a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just trying to find... There's another excerpt from that book I've been taking some stuff from that's about what we're talking about. I'm trying to find it. Um, have you have you read um, Mental Game of Poker 1, by the way? I think I got about maybe... Like a third of the way through, hmm. and then I got really annoyed. So I was listening to it. I got really annoyed, but it kept telling me to go do exercises, and I couldn't do them. <laughs> so yeah. I got really annoyed by it and stopped listening to it because I felt like it was something I had to do. Uh, it does help, but I mean, it, it might just be worth reading through the rest of it without doing exercises anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I think I might have found it. I was listening to it. Obviously, I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the actual exercise down the book, so I can't do the exercises. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically just um reiterate some what I just said, I think. Mm. Um oh. Trying to get the source out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that'll be enough to like you know give you some ideas anyway. Yeah. About what to do for that. Um. um uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just gonna add actually as well. Um, when you do do that as well, don't just see whether you're succeeding or failing at doing what you're trying to do. Just stop based on like whether you win the interaction or not, like, whether you do the tilt. As long as you're building up, like, recognition of the situation, that's still, like, yeah. a win. Yeah, um, try not to do... not have results-based thinking, results-oriented thinking, or whatever it's called, right? Yeah, like, it's a... Um, it's a process of, like, mm. you know, first of all, recognising what you should have done, and then recognising it in the moment, and then mm. being able to do the input, and then being able to do it game five last stock, loses mm. round two you know, one one <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um and that that goes back to like the levels thing we were saying. But yeah, it's not like binary of just like either you can do it or you can't. It's mm. um it's on the scale. Um yeah. So I'm finished from Alpha. Oh another one of the other like things I wanted to mention, right? I mean, as someone who's Gone to like a pretty a decently high level of the game. Mm. I feel like since we started like coaching stuff, I've like gotten like 
I don't know. I feel like I love melee like more than I have, ha- ever have. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Not this weird way. Yeah. And I just like I just have like can't stop wanting to play all the time. Um, That's good. But I have I'm trying to like so at the moment I kind of like feel like I want to just like really try and test myself in a way, but I don't know. I was wondering if there's if you've got like a like almost like a time frame like how I should be spending my time because um. I don't want to be wasting time. Yeah. In a way, right? So I'm thinking, like, I don't want to be like, oh, I want to get good at the game. I'm just going to play friendlies all day. Because, mm. <laughs> like, that's obviously not going to work if I don't do it properly. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, uh, like how much time maybe I should put into analysis or, like, other, other things. Like, how should I be playing in netplay tournaments all the time? Or should I just, like, only do one a week, maybe? Hmm. Um, I want to put like a lot, of, a decent amount of my spare time into it. I think I've decided. Yeah. It. Well, what's your definition of getting good? First of all. Um. Hmm. That's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah, because it sort of determines how much effort and how specific, you, like. If if getting good to you is um, getting to like bottom end of PR level, that's you need to do. No, you don't I need want... to do as much as like you know getting top one hundred, for example. I want to. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if getting top one hundred is the goal. That seems insanely far away. Um, I don't know if that's like the goal. That would probably that would be like an end goal. Hmm. But I mean, in a reachable time, I don't know. I would love. To, I feel like right now it'd be like maybe like top ten PR UK. Well, I'd say, I'd say have an yeah. end goal and then sort of work your way backwards. Mm. So if that's an end goal, that's like, fine. So um, top one hundred would be sick, right? But like, it feels so out of reach. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can go to top ten UK if you want. But like, my thoughts about it recently, like, I've been like. Most of my time playing melee, I've both been like, I've been like, eh. When I lose, I kind of like haven't really. I've cared, but like, I kind of got over it fast. Yeah. I feel like recently, I've cared a lot more. Yeah. Losing like actually sucks. <laughs> yeah, because you're more invested and you're putting more of your effort into it, so it's not yeah. cool that you feel a bit more um, emotional about it. And, I, and, I, and it's changing my four process from I want to get good to I just want to beat these fools. Yeah. I'm not really. And I don't know when that stops, you know? I want to beat everyone, I don't want to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel the same way. So, so real, <laughs> it doesn't so really stop. Top 100 is like the goal, right? Yeah. But it feels silly to say, considering, like, I lost to Swish and uh, Pikachu that I never heard of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's why you break it down into smaller achievable steps, mm. right? Um, well, hmm. I'm just trying to think, because um, I had a similar talk with Rich P, actually, because he said he wants to make PR, but um, obviously it's really hard at the moment because there's no PR. Mm, <laughs> so mm. it's a pretty hard goal to judge, if that makes sense. I want... Say so Piano comes back, I want to win the UK at Play Weekly. That's a small goal. But Morrison, yeah, yeah. But Morrison King went to them, so it's like a hard goal. It's a hard it's goal, but it's still like... doable. Like, I don't think they're, yeah. you know, unbeatable. Um, yeah, so I mean, we can work toward. So if if we have that as your goal, then like you want to win a net play mm, weekly until league. like Lang comes back. Yeah. Okay. So if we have that as a sort of end goal, so mm. um, like I said, I did talk about this with Rich P a bit as well because we went over like you know to win one of the weeklies, you need to be good at the most prominent matchups, right? Mm. So mm. Fox in the UK net play ones mainly Fox Falco. And some floaties, um, mm. and obviously the higher up the bracket you get, the more you're running into the same people. So yeah. at that point, it's more about being the specific player, kind of. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about like being like, oh, I want to get really good at these bunch of specific matchups just so I can win a UK weekly. You know, I kind of want to get like, I want to be like varied. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it'll it'll translate to. Other <laughs> events, not just the yeah, I guess. Weekly. Um, 
I just want to be like that guy who's like, oh, he's really good versus Fox or it's Spacey's just because he enters the week. Like, just because that yeah, was... Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I think we went a bit over your, like, practice regime in the first lesson, right? Yeah. Uh, and we sort of fixed some of your solo practice stuff. Mm. So, so are you mm. still keeping up with that, or is it still mainly in that play? No, I'm still keeping up with that. I've been doing making sure... <laughs> Source. <laughs> I've been making sure to do, like... Uh... I try and, like, I normally, like, put on, like, a half-hour or so YouTube video to, like, gauge, like, to, like, keep um, my keep my bored monkey brain entertained. It is side. boring, yeah. Doing so but also, good. like, but also still focus on the on what I'm doing and what I'm practicing. Mm. So, like, I'll spend, like, maybe, like, five minutes or so practicing. I'm sorry about this noise. I'm, just, I'm trying to get the last stuff out when I'm trying to get the last sound out of the bottle and it's just, it's just making noise out of me. <laughs> <sighs> okay, but yeah. Um, I'll do like five minutes like practicing my movement stuff, specific stuff. Like I've been trying to do like all that kind of just like making more specific stuff like those platform laser things that I still can't do quite correctly. Always practicing my ledge dashes for a bit. Like mm. well, just keeping up on the tech stuff, right? That, and then I'll spend like the rest of the time practicing my combo game. Okay, so it feels yeah. like you're... And recently I've been putting in the laser dashbacks for, like, like a, quite a few minutes as well because I'm awful at it. <laughs> yeah, so, so it feels like you're doing useful stuff with your time and solo practice yeah. then. Okay, so that's yeah, it doesn't good. feel like I'm wasting it. Okay. Um, so then... Um, analysis, you said you watched back those FUDs from the tournament, but have you done anything, like, outside of that in, say, the past month? Hmm... I've gone back and watched some of my sets, but not, like, in-depth. Okay. Outside of our lessons. Um, so I, want to, I think I've been... This part of one, one of the things that, like, I want to... Like, if I want to try really hard, I want to... Like, put more time... A bit more time into analysis, probably. Yeah, I probably mean... I just don't, like, do it at the moment. I've been slacking on it a lot. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be, like, hardcore 0.5 speed analyze every single dash <laughs> sort mm. of thing. Um, one thing that can be good if it's a bit overwhelming to do analysis as well is just to sort of after you've played your net play games or whatever, just like sit and think about them for five ten minutes and try to remember back what happened. Mm. Um, and that also helps your in game like memory as well. Um, which is why I've started doing more and more, and I think that's more effective honestly than sitting down and watching a vod and going through all that stuff. Um, mm. if you can sort of pinpoint a few things that really stick out in your mind and then work hard on fixing them for next time I think that's a lot of the time a bit more effective mm. Mm. but you have to be careful because sometimes your mind can play tricks on you and what you think is happening isn't actually happening which is where watching the actual VOD in front of you helps mm. so I think maybe a combination of the two where you come out of a net play session and you're like damn, I was really getting hit by a lot of approaching lasers by this Falco. So then you go into the VOD and you look for those spots. Yeah. And you sort of, you know, break yeah, it down from that. I've done that in the past. Okay, that's good then. I think you should do more of, of that stuff. Mm. Um, I think if there's one thing that I've done in my sort of path to get into where I am, which wasn't very efficient, it was the amount of analysis I did and just, like, hundreds of pages of writing stuff mm. that just doesn't stick or isn't very relevant yeah um you know like it'll either be i know what to do in this situation but i can't execute it so it doesn't matter or it'll be something that's so incredibly niche that it doesn't really have an effect on 90 percent of the games i play mm. um mm. and i think improving quickly and getting to a spot where you can win Tournaments is all about focusing on the things that come up the most and have the biggest impact. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if you can sort of, like, figure out the uh, the sort of common openers people get or the common things that they play around and you can, you know, base a game plan based off of that, then I think you'll see results quite quickly. Mm. Um. And the same with figuring out some sort of like chump checks for stuff like the laser dashback laser stuff or just approaching laser or falco and testing if they can deal with it. Mm. 
Um, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like scoff this down. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. Um, um. Yeah, so I think that'll be good to do, and then. Um, how much time do you have at the moment also? Because that's another big mm. factor. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's right, it's pretty tight. I'll drink my tea. I think we want tea now. Um, <laughs> how much time? Um, I was kind of talking about this with um, Rachel this morning. Um, I work like six hours a day, five days a week. Uh, so like um, so if I put into like to actual like math numbers, I can actually kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I have I have like roughly I wake up at like roughly nine each day. And like go to sleep around twelve, so I have like fifteen hours a day. Wait, so you say you work six? Was that six hours a day? Yeah. So and that's five, five days a five week. Days a week. Yeah. yeah, so that's thirty hours. Um, I'm very much a, like you know get the money I want need and then I'm kind of happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd do the same if I could. Um, yeah, nice it's the joy of doing what I do. So you have. What, so you have like nine hours in the day outside of work? Yeah. And then obviously weekends are weekends. Yeah. Um, you gotta think about, I've gotta think about like, you know, time I spend like, eating breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yeah, exactly. So I'd uh, probably s- say you have like realistically probably around five or six hours you could spend if you want to go super yeah. hard and play in melee. Um but one trap to avoid falling into is sort of like putting that expectation of you must play six hours each day. Yeah, obviously no. life shit happens. <laughs> yeah, obviously, uh, right? I can't like force it. Yeah, I really, really don't want to like ever feel like I'm forcing myself. Do you ever? Yeah. Like, do you ever feel like you're forcing yourself to play when you're trying to get good? Yeah, definitely. You did. <laughs> okay, that's interesting because I I've always like had a kind of the attitude where I don't want to feel like I'm forcing myself to play, but I feel like if I want to, if I you don't really want to, I should probably force myself some days. I think the uh, most of the top players have been pretty self-destructive with how they've gotten as good as they are. Uh, obviously, I don't know for everyone, but a lot of them have just sort of like, you know, just grinded super hard and had like off-seasons and all that stuff. So I don't know, like, it's finding the balance between figuring out whether you, whether you're burnt out or whether you're just being lazy. Which can be very hard sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because there will be there will be days where I'm like, I know I should practice, but I can't be asked. And there's days Mm -hmm. where I'm like, I don't even think about melee today. Yeah, that's the difference between being burnt out and being, you know, just tired. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry, being um, being lazy. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I would probably split it. You want to be spending the majority of the time playing, I think. Mm. Um, and which can be a combination of solo practice and net playing. So, so if we're going off for five hours, say, I'd yeah. probably spend four hours solo practice, net play, and one hour analyzing slash thinking about the games. Mm. Um, what you run the risk of doing if you spend too much time analyzing is you end up with the overconsumption thing, like you yeah. were saying with the Fargo stuff, where like you've got so many ideas and things to implement that even if you play a load it's still all going to be con- sort of like jumbled up yeah whereas if you just have like two or three ideas that you grind four hours a day for a week then you're going to get it within the week and it'll yeah. actually stick instead of sort of fall out the bottom like you were describing mm. Mm. Um, my issue like sometimes is like trying to find like if i have an issue like i have ideas in a matchup my issue is like trying to find the matchup mm. <laughs> sometimes yeah um one thing i did and do is um i have a list of each character and then things i want to work on in each matchup yeah um, i have that yeah which it does take a bit of time to like constantly update and 
mm-hmm. you know, figure out stuff for. But it definitely helps when, say, you're queuing unranked for whatever reason, and you see Fox, and you can just look at your note, and it says, Fox, I'm doing this, 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 and then yeah. it's there for you. Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, should, I should just go off every single character. Yeah. I don't, have um, one for, I don't have one for, like, Fox and Sheik and stuff. I have one for a few. Yeah. The, the other thing you can do as well is just have, uh, like, general gameplay things that you're mm. working on. Like, for me, what I'm working on at the moment is using dashes between my lasers to sort of mix up my timings and play at different spacings and stuff. Um, yeah. And that's something I can just apply to any match if I'm playing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if you do want to practice a specific match, I would be, like, you know, adding Fox or DMing specific people rather than just, like, leaving it to chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got, I've, I'm slowly developing a reptile. I've got a few people. I have been messaging people trying to be like, are you done? Just like, play sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sick. Um, so, yeah, I think that would be the best way to go about it. Obviously, you can change those around a bit if you feel like you haven't got enough things to work on, then maybe you analyse and think a bit more about the games. Or yeah. Or if you really need to get something down in solo practice, then maybe, you know, you do that a bit more. It's, it's flexible. Um Hmm. But I definitely think the ratio should be more towards actually playing the game rather than playing melee in your head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which is what sure, I end up doing sometimes. How um, much other practice do you reckon? Like, ideally, like, at least? Um, I think... Uh, you, you could try doing one hour instead of 30 minutes, and I think that might be beneficial. Yeah. Um... Fuck, it's a fucking long time, man. <laughs> it is, yeah. But the thing is, the, the better you get, the like you still need to solo practice, but the less you need to because it's all already kind of there. Whereas yeah. at your level, you're still sort of making a lot of execution errors, mm. which cost you. It's um, so weird, like at the moment, when I think about my execution because, like, I feel like I feel like I have a lot of stuff down that it comes on to. I'm like, oh, <clears throat> it's like the levels you're talking about, right? Yeah, it's just really frustrating when I like. I can wave dash. I can wave. I haven't played the for four years, so, but sometimes I just miss them. <laughs> like, oh. yeah. And that's the thing is, like, it's useless talk, like analyzing a set and knowing what you should do if you're not hitting the right buttons to yeah. do those things, or you're just giving away free openings because you messed up a wave dash, for example. So that should be like the the foundation that you never m- mess up. You know. Um. So yeah, I, I think I'd try and stick with one hour solo, one hour analysis, one hour and mm-hmm. three hours playing maybe, mm. and then tune analysis more or less depending on what you know yeah, how much stuff you think you have to work on. I also might like not have as much time in the day sometimes. So hmm. yeah, but I'd keep yeah. it around that ratio. Yeah, um, like a what was, what was the ratio twenty twenty sixty <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I can't be able to do the math. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Be able to do that. <laughs> it's something like that. But yeah, um, yeah. No, I, I think that that sounds like the the best way to allocate your time. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I just gotta just gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. That's fair. It's good to just like. It's way easier to just talk to someone who's like already done it all. Yeah, I've already <laughs> made though, yeah. a lot of mistakes with scheduling what I do and you yeah. know practicing the wrong things. So yeah, it's kind of like a shortcut, um, <laughs> which is nice. Mm, mm. <sighs> okay, I did send you some games if you wanted to look over some something. Yeah, I'm done. The rest of it. I got. I sent um. I mentioned I lost a random Pikachu. I lost a Pikachu. I, haven't, I don't know who they are, but <laughs> I lost a Pikachu because I don't really get it at all. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I looked. Pikachu's I ended name. up analysing some Pikachu uh, Falco like very, very briefly to try and get like an idea of what to do. Um, yeah, but having like a bit more concrete stuff would be nice in case I run into Pikachu's. Hmm. I would. I would have ideally liked to look to a fox, but I don't have any good. Don't have any good fox sets. I've played in the past. Yeah. How I, long? I mean, I think working on random... Uh, sort of like random characters like this is good because it's one of the barriers to get to the next level is like being able to just beat random 
jank characters that you don't <laughs> know yeah. much about. Um, and Peach like, is definitely one of those. That I feel like I've beaten them just by like playing well. I know I feel like I've beaten them because I understood what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like I think there's two elements to beating like characters like Pikachu, Samus, whatever. There's the sort of knowing their game plan, gimmicks, whatever you, you want to call it. And there's also just the like having better fundamentals, and you can win with either one, uh, or both. Because, um, like for example, um, <laughs> I used to lose to um, Rash Tech for a long, long time. Yeah, uh, I was like Owen six in sets or something, and then I just like got slightly better and just started destroying him because some of the fundamental stuff just like sort of clicked for beating Doc as a character yeah. um, it was mainly to do with like not getting hit by wave dash back grab and stuff like that um, yeah so but yeah that's just an example of like I didn't really put any more time into the doc match of it. it was just I got better as a player so then it sort of translated really well to beating ca- characters that are limited um, mm. so I'll obviously try and point out some of the Pikachu sort of like game plan gimmicky stuff but then I'll also try and point out some of the you know like this is a situation where you would have got hit regardless of what character it was, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, let me share my screen. <sighs> but yeah, Pikachu is another one of those characters. Uh, just saying about being scared as well. The like, it feels like you can just die at any moment, <laughs> mm. especially near ledge, or at least to me. Um, that's how it feels. We didn't, I didn't really. I got. I only got gimped in this and like the last stock of the of the game.